we are gathered here together today for a beginning oil painters workshop. And to let you know how much of a beginner I expect you to be, this is a paintbrush. <laughs> we're going to have fun today. And we're going to be introduced to the technique of oil paint. If you have never worked with oil paint before, we're going to be doing a lot of um, really, really basic stuff to give you a foundation upon which to build. So what we're going to be doing today is, and, and what we're going to be covering is going to be very, very fundamental. But with these fundamentals, you will hopefully at the end of these two days have a foundation that you can build on with some confidence, with at least some knowledge of where you want to go because you've got a good base to start out from. We're going to be working with oil paint. And uh, the reason I like oil paint for beginners is that, in my opinion, oil paint is very, very student friendly. I want to take just a moment and explain the difference between cold and warm. And to do that, we're going to look at the color wheel. I have this arrow going from the middle of the green to the middle of the red. And we've divided the color wheel into two halves. We've divided it into the yellow-orange half and the blue-violet half. When I say a warm color, I'm talking a color that has a hint of a, of a yellow-orange, yellow-orange, red-orange, yellowy-green, something that is from the warm half of the color wheel. Now, why do we call it warm? Well, all of us have sat at a, at a fireside, either at a campfire or a fireplace, and we've been mesmerized by that cuddly, warm glow, and there's kind of a primordial affinity we have with a campfire. Well, these warm colors are colors that our eye and our brain process as colors that are close to us. Cool colors are the colors associated with an iceberg or something really, really cold. So on the blue-violet side, iceberg, cold, if something is cool or cold, what we're saying is that the color we're referring to has a blue-violet, a violet, a blue, a blue-green, or a reddish-violet, or a cool green, a, bl a, a bluish violet green, a, a, a bluish violet to the red. A blue green or a violet or a cool bluish violet hue to it. So the warm half is the yellow orange half, the blue violet half is the cool half. So if I say your color is too cool, you respond by warming it up with a color that has a, a, a latent warm side to it. If I say your color is too warm, you cool it with a cool color. Anything from the cool side. Now, I have a cool green here. This is a viridian green that is a little bit on the cool side. But that coolness is going to interact with this neutral Mother Earth or slightly warm Mother Earth color. Raw Sienna is somewhat of a warm Mother Earth and I'm going to be using a cool green that has Father Sky in it and Mother Earth. Mother Earth and Father Sky have already been married and they produce this child that's called Viridian Green. Before we green. go on to the next phase of our workshop, I want to talk to you a little bit about complementary colors. The color wheel is something that has been perfected over a period of many years and it's has to do with our primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, how they work with one another. There's things called analogous colors and the color triad and all these things. There's a real science associated with the color wheel. The number one thing that I wanted to call your attention to was what we discussed earlier, which was the difference between a warm and a cool color. Now I want to take just a moment and talk to you about complementary colors. You'll notice that I have this arrow that goes from the green to the red, which divides the color wheel in half. Warm half, cold half. But let's take a look at what happens if we go to a red-orange. The, the color that's straight across the wheel is a blue-green. 
So if we take a look at orange or a burnt sienna, which is Mother Earth's red and orange, we see that a blue-green with that is going to give us essentially a complement or a neutralized color, which we experimented with the burnt sienna and the dark green, we ended up getting a black. Well, in reality, what that is is complementary colors. Whenever complementary colors are mixed together, they neutralize each other and produce a gray. So if I take this color wheel now and turn it over to, say, yellow and purple, you think of a sunrise or a sunset, we think of a lot of yellows, we think of some yellow oranges, and we think of oranges that are in the sky of a sunset, sunrise. Well, look what happens. What colors are you going to use to complement those strong colors and gray things out? Orange and blue. What are the colors for that football team down in Florida? Orange and blue. Yellow, orange, and violet. These are, yellow, orange is a what's called a tertiary color. It is a color that you get when you mix a primary and the secondary color next to it. It's a tertiary color, so you have a tertiary color of blue-violet that goes with it. Now, thinking in terms of, say, a cloud or a series of clouds in a sunrise or sunset, they're going to have to be neutralized or grayed a little bit. So if you've got some or yellow-orange or, or, or sun-drenched clouds, but it's a cloud there, the way you get it is to use the complements on it. So complementary color is defined as any two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Any two colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel. So when we do a landscape, we do a landscape with a lot of, of if it's a summer type of landscape, we have the summer greens. If it's a spring landscape, we have the spring greens. If we have a fall landscape, we get into some yellows, oranges, yellow, orange, orange, red oranges. And be, you know, be aware that in producing that seasonal effect, depending on what's out there, you use a lot of the complements. Because what do complementary colors do? Complementary colors make each other look their best when they're side by side. If you have an orange flower, if you can put something blue or a bluish color around it, that orange looks its best when it has a blue neighbor. Yellow looks its best when it has a purple neighbor. Green looks its best when it has a red neighbor and vice versa. So thinking in terms of some of the petunias, we have beautiful petunias that are yellow, but what's the heart of that petunia? It's purple. If you have, an, have a, a red flower, how often do you see blues around it? Or a bluish green, you know? So complementary colors play side by side, make each other look their best. And that's something that we want to remember. 